Hello YouTubers and welcome to Nick DK Online. My name is Nick Ventura and you're watching all we know about the Elder Scrolls Online. Okay, now before I get started on the Elder Scrolls Online, I would like to give a brief run through of the original Elder Scrolls so you'll understand later references to the original Elder Scrolls games. The Elder Scrolls is an action, role-playing, open-world video game series developed by Bethesda Game Studios and published by Bethesda Softworks. Before 1993, not many people heard of the name Elder Scroll, and funny enough, nor had the developers of the first game, because at that time, the first Elder Scrolls game was just called Arena. The first time the world learned of the Elder Scrolls was via the release of the video game Arena. Arena was released in 1994 for DOS PC systems. The game was intended for players to assume the role of an Arena combatant. But development shifted the game into a role-playing game. This game began the tradition based on the principle of being who you want and doing what you want that persists through the series today. In 1996 they released Elder Scrolls II Daggerfall. Daggerfall was the first in the series that featured a large scale world in 3D. One of the selling points of Daggerfall was that the game world would be twice the size of Great Britain. In the years 1997 and 1998, Bethesda released two Elder Scrolls titles, Elder Scrolls Legend Battlespire and the Elder Scrolls Adventures Red Guard. Both games had a smaller focus than the previous games because they limited themselves to a dungeon game and the Elder Scrolls Adventures Red Guard was a linear third-person action-adventure game. But Bethesda wanted to go back to its roots, so in 2002, they released what they called the third Elder Scrolls game, Morrowind. Morrowind saw a return to the old style expansive and non-linear gameplay, and a shift towards individual detailed landscapes and items. With a smaller game world than the past main titles but still larger than the worlds of the two spin-offs, it was developed simultaneously for PC and Microsoft Xbox console. The game achieved commercial success and sold over 4 million copies by mid-2005. Two expansions were released between the late 2002 and early 2003, the Elder Scrolls III Tribunal and the Elder Scrolls III Blood Moon. The Game of the Year edition contained the original game plus both expansion packs as well as the latest patch. Later a modding tool was released which for the first time opened up for a whole new community of developers and modders that made Morrowind one of, if not the best single player RPG of all time. Development of the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion began in 2002 focused on artificial intelligence improvements that interact dynamically with the game world, better known as Radiant AI, a way to randomize aspects of the game so that it would not be the same experience in another playthrough, implementing of Havoc physics engines and improved graphics. The game was released on PC and the Xbox 360 in early 2006 and for PlayStation 3 in early 2007. Bethesda Softworks released one content selection and expansive pack in late 2006 and early 2007. The Elder Scrolls IV Knights of the Nine and the Elder Scrolls IV Shivering Hearts. Game of the Year edition was later released featuring the original game plus all expansion packs and update for all three platforms with the PC version getting exclusive mod tools and several other bonuses.
Lastly, The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim was announced on December 11, 2010 at the Spike Video Game Awards 2010. The game is not a direct sequel to its predecessor Oblivion, but instead takes place 200 years later in the land called Skyrim in Tamriel. Skyrim also makes use of an updated graphics engine. It was released on November 11, 2011 to critical acclaim. Skyrim received Spike's Game of the Year award in IGN's Xbox 360 and PC Game of the Year awards in 2011. Less than one year after the release of Skyrim, a sneak peek trailer was released. This is what we saw. The Imperial Throne sits empty. The dragon fires cold, unlit, and from every corner, darkness grows. Now, ancient enemies band together. Unlikely alliances are forged. Old ambitions rekindle. And as enemies rise faster than allies, salvation cannot come from one hero alone. Really, the only word for it is... That is pretty much how I felt the first time I saw the trailer. But to say the truth, I was also skeptical. But um, I will get into that a little bit later. First, let's talk about The Elder Scrolls Online. Even though all previous Elder Scrolls games were developed by Bethesda, The Elder Scrolls Online is not. The Elder Scrolls Online is being developed by a sister company of Bethesda, called Cinemax Online. And um, before people start screaming about it not being made by the right people, then let me just say that Bethesda is still uh, a supporting role in the development of The Elder Scrolls Online. Plus, uh, Bethesda have only made single-player games, so we can be sure that Cinemax will handle the job better, because uh, they are a dedicated online developer. Plus, uh, the team leaders uh, of Cinemax Online are developers that also worked on uh, games like Dark Age of Camelot and Ultima Online. And uh, both these games are in a hardcore MMO game type, so uh, personally, I could not think of a better team uh, for our online Elder Scrolls game. But uh, before I start to talk about gameplay and graphics and mechanics, uh, let's first talk about uh, the settings of the Elder Scrolls. A millennia before the setting of Skyrim, and 800 years before that of Oblivion, the beautiful world of Tamriel was about to change. In the second era of 578, an arcane explosion of energy in the Imperial City set off a mystical aftershock that swept across the Nern. Mages died or went mad, supernatural abominations from the Plain of Oblivion, the Deirdre, appeared in greater numbers than ever before. The constellation of the Serpent grew so large that it dominated the night sky. So began the grand scheme of Moloch Ball. Diedrich Prince of Domination and Enslavement. These dark anchors, vortexes of evil magic, weakened the barrier between worlds, threatening to merge Nern and Oblivion into a single nightmarish hellscape. In the midst of this chaos, three alliances rose to fight for control of the Imperial City, and the white gold tower from the dark forces of Oblivion itself. Four years after the explosion, the three alliances not only fight the darkness, but each other to take the throne of Tamriel, claim right to rule the land. 
At this point, Cyrodiil is ruled by the imperial family of nobles, the Thon, and the empress, Clivia Thon. Her father, Chancellor of the Elder, Apno Thon, is an old, hardened battle mage, and the family has in secret been Deirdric worshippers for decades. When Abnathan sees the alliances prepare for war against Cyrodiil, he seeks alliance with the Deirdric, and Molech Baal's main agent on Tamriel, the Necromancer and the Marco. When all this becomes common knowledge to all the alliances, it is but an extra incentive to take over Cyrodiil and kill or dethrone the Thorn. But which faction will prove to be the strongest? You will be able to join one of three factions. The Daggerfall Covenant, the Altmeri Dominion and the Ebonheart Pact. The Daggerfall Covenant. High King Emric is a Breton merchant lord whose shrewd policies and masterful diplomacy has earned him the trust of the kings of High Rock. An alliance by marriage with the Red Guards and ultimately a war treaty with the Orcs. He rules from Wayrest in High Rock. The Daggerfall Covenant is formed by the three races of Northwest Tamriel, united by King Emric to fulfill a common goal and take back the Ruby Throne. The Bretons have the gift of magic and diplomacy. The Orcs are hardened soldiers and talented armorers who manufacture the finest weapons and armor in all of Tamriel. The Red Guards are supremely athletic and raised to be outstanding warriors from the moment they are born. The Covenant varied talents make it a force to be reckoned with. The Covenant is compromised of the two provinces of Northwest Tamriel, High Rock and Hammerfell, home to the Bretons and the Red Guards. The Covenant has also offered the Orcs the opportunity to return to the ancient homeland of Asinium in exchange for their support. Working together, the three races have formed a powerful alliance that aims to restore the Second Empire and bring peace and prosperity back to Tamriel. The Ebonheart Pact is the most unlikely of the three alliances. The Norse and the Dark Elves have a long history of conflict and the Agonians were enslaved by the Dark Elves for thousands of years. It was the Akiveri invasion that forged a bond between them. Now they are determined to control their own destiny by defeating the Empire, while preserving their own fiercely independent homelands. The Nords are the brash, busters front line of the pact, fierce warriors and expert weapons masters. The Dark Elves have a natural affinity for magic, and the Agonians are the best guerrilla warriors in Tamriel. The combined strength of these unlikely alliances make the Ebonheart Pact a fighting force of extraordinary power. The Ebonheart Pact is the most genius of alliances, consisting of former enemies turned allies in the northern and eastern of Tamriel. The Old Mary Dominion Queen Irene is intelligent and honorable, with a genuine humility rarely seen among her people, but she is also a decisive leader with a stubborn streak. She is young for a high elf, a mere 28 year old, but she spent much of her first part of her life roaming the lands and seas of Tamriel, seeking adventure and the kind of education schools cannot impart. The return to Somerset following the death of her father to accept her position as heir to the Altmer throne. When word reaches the High Elves of Somerset that the Imperial City had fallen under the control of the human supporters of Moloch Bol, the Altmeri Dominion was formed. The High Elves reach out to the neighboring races of Wood Elves and Kashit with a plea that their combined forces might prevent 
the younger races of Tamriel from bringing disaster to the world as they had so many times in the past. The High Elves were the original settlers of Tamriel and created the common tongue used throughout the continent today. They are also naturally proficient with magic. The Wood Elves inhabit the thick, near impenetrable forest of Valenwood. They are supreme hunters, guides and masters in sneaking and thievery. They are also the most gifted archers in all of Tamriel. The Kashit, a proud feline race of fearsome warriors, proficient with the bladed weapons. They stand proudly at the forefront of every battle. The power and determination of the Albmeri Dominion shouldn't be underestimated. The Albmeri Dominion is composed of the three races of Southern Tamriel. The Albmeri Dominion fights to stop the dangerous humankind and restore the Elven dominance in Tamriel. Okay, you now have the background story of the Elder Scrolls Online, the games that came before, the story, and the three alliances. In part two of this video, I will talk about the graphics, the combat, the PvP, and the PvE. So I hope you like the show, if so, join me next time in all we know about the Elder Scrolls Online.